How do? Come on then, come on then. Go on then. Good lad. So today, I'm going to be talking about two brothers. Two brothers that we had at Strange Ways, where I used to work, prison. Joey Barton, he was a footballer, and his younger brother, his younger brother was in for murder. Uh, he landed at Strange Ways in very strange and special circumstances. I will explain that after I've explained about his brother. His brother was, uh, well, quite infamous, uh, assaultative. I'm sure you know what that word means. It's not in the dictionary. Um, well known for training ground bust ups with his teammates and other things. Before I get onto them two, uh, little introduction. We have a lot of new subscribers. Criminal Justice Mental Health. Get out with my dog, Stephen, you've just seen vlogging and I love interviewing people. Last two months, not a lot of content, not a lot of interviews. Uh, you know, we've had things we've had to put in place as a family and that, which we we're now in a much better place. We're now getting sorted. So winter's coming, cooler foot dog will be out vlogging most days and I will be back on the road interviewing people. You know, like I said, that's criminal justice, mental health and people, you know, with, excuse me, with stories to tell. Um, a lot of amazing people out there. So on to today's vlog. I'm not actually talking about the crime, the murder his brother was in for. In the pinned comment, I will put, a link to an article um, I'm gonna put a poll up once the vlog goes live on the community page if you'd like to partake in that and if you'd like to come on the channel or you would like me to vlog something drop me an email email in the description to every video if you can't or don't have an email get someone to do it on your behalf right let's talk about Joey Barton the footballer so when he came strange ways, uh, he ended up on B-Wing, the drug-free wing. <laughs> so sorry, the drug-free wing, B-Wing, B-Wing. Um, when I started at strange ways, drug-free wing, very quiet. B-Wing used to pick their own prisoners. You know, where I work, K-Wing, they would come up if we had someone who was possibly a candidate and they would interview him. It was a quiet wing, um, obviously drug free, um, of course, tongue in cheek. And for me, it was quite an undisciplined wing. If you worked on B wing, don't be offended. It was just so laid back, it was unreal. And if, or I remember an instance, I was on there, somebody asked me for an iron. Yeah, so I said to him, could I have your ID card? Everything, all tools, irons, things like that in prison are shadow boarded. They have their place. Um, I asked him for his ID card. He said, we don't do that on here. I said, I do. He's quite offended, got quite abusive. It was too laid back, that wing. Um, you know, run on goodwill or whatever. But like I said, the prisoners could do what they want. And a lot of them were up to no good. So Joey Barton landed on there. He got a job on the survey. Server is where he served meals quite quickly. And he ended up as the gym orderly. Strange ways, quite an impressive gym. Uh, Cat B local jail. We were in the high security stakes. We had a Cat A unit where the highest level security of prisoners were kept. The main gym was quite impressive. It was a big gym. Uh, Olympic weights, machines, the lot, the whole nine yards. That was the premium job in the jail. Bar, bar none other. You know, the gym orderly would go home in the morning, wash towels, uh, they could eat when they want, they could train when they want, or within limitations of the classes, but it was a cracking job and he got that job. For me, he was treated different. Uh, that was nothing to do with our governor or the prison. Possibly not the prison service, that was outside sources having an influence because we had a, I don't know, was in the premiership then, a premiership footballer. So he was definitely threat different for me. Then his brother, Michael Barton. I was approached by uh, a senior officer, 
Again, a lot of new people. UK prison system, you have a prison officer, senior officer, wing base manager in uniform, a principal officer. They do the shift manager's job, Oscar one and Oscar two. They're also in uniform and might be overall in charge of a wing or the segregation or the healthcare or reception or something like that. The next step up then was governor. So this guy's a senior officer. I didn't know him. I did get to know him. Uh, I liked him. He was a funny guy. He had a good way with prisoners. He had a personality. He didn't take things personally. He didn't take things personally. Uh, good all round skills as a prison officer. So he approached me. Used to work with young offenders. Yes, I did in the private sector. Would you like to do some night shifts on the healthcare? Yes, I would. I was doing overtime then, like you do, you need the money. Very strange setup this. I remember the first time I went on, he took me over. So Michael Barton, when the offence was committed, came to prison, was 17, I believe. His co-accused was his cousin, who was 20. So technically, Michael Barton was a juvenile, that's up to 17. 18, you become a young offender, and on your 21st birthday, you become an adult. So he was a juvenile, his cousin was a young offender, but they were both on the healthcare unit. The works department had isolated three cells. There was a gym with showers, and there was three cells, and these two lads were in there. Uh, no contact with the outside world or other prisoners. They had everything they needed in that unit. They got showers, there was a little gym. You don't need a gym, but they got a gym. Um, I did quite a few nights, on nights, DVD player, watching films with this lad. So why was he in strange ways as a juvenile? For me, it could have been a prison service, but I doubt uh, it would be outside sources. Yeah, probably the Ministry of Justice who knows, the fact he was the brother of a well-known footballer, uh, probably had something to do with it, probably uh, made him or put him at risk, and they didn't want to put him in a juvenile um, prison or with other juveniles. That's what I'm thinking. Like I said, I did quite a lot of shifts on there. It was easy money for me. There were safeguarding issues. I did bring this up, which got wrote off straight away. One officer, on nights with a juvenile, leaving yourselves open, aren't you? I know people now, incidentally, who work in care. That's adult lads and lasses working with lads and lasses one-to-one -one, um, in like housing units. You leave yourself very, very vulnerable. Anyway, that was the setup. It was very strange. At some point, his cousin when his cousin, and again, you know, I'm not talking about the crime, I'm just talking about my dealings with him. Michael Barton was user-friendly as it was, yeah? Um, you know, he could talk to him or whatever. His cousin, a bit more abrupt. Uh, me and him didn't particularly get on. For me, you know, he didn't want anything to do with us, and eventually he disappeared, whether he went to adult estate at 21 or they moved him out. I don't know when they moved him out because the case was coming up and they got these two together. I don't know, all strange circumstances, very strange. You know, there, there ain't many times that um, a prison is gonna have a little unit built and made to house someone. Anyway, I'm just gonna leave it there. Like I said, pinned comment, I'll put an article to Michael, Bar Michael Barton's crime. And on the community page, I will put a poll. Parting shot as always. Now then, laddo. Yeah, good lad. Good lad. Very autumnal, guys. Thanks for coming, Al City.